Hello, beloved friends. Welcome back to a new episode of the Courage Within podcast with your host, Libier. In today's episode, I have such a lovely guest, my friend, Allie, and I am so excited for you to meet her. I met Allie at church, and God has given us such amazing friendship to bear each other's burdens and also to rejoice with one another, and it has been a relationship that has blessed my heart in more ways than I can possibly count. Allie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Of course. I am so, so excited. Actually, Ali was in one of my other YouTube videos, but not an actual podcast. So if you guys are interested in going, seeing how she styled some fall outfits, we're going to leave that link down below for you because Ali has great style. I would go to church and every Sunday I was mesmerized by her style. And I just was like, oh my gosh, I wanted to take a picture of her outfits every single day. She inspired me so very much on the style front. But then what inspired me the most when I got to to know to know Ali is her heart for Jesus and the way that she is just an amazing friend that continues to point me to where I need to go which is God's word and mm-hmm. Jesus's feet so thank you so much for your friendship oh gosh well ditto 100% I just could not be more grateful for your friendship and I think that was the same attraction that I had to you as well when I would see you at churches oh wow she really put that together well like who is this? And I think when we first, I remember the first conversation we had and it just wasn't style, but it was just, again, that like richness of being in relationship with God and that just being a light, right? Like just being a light onto, um, onto your feet that just lit up the entire room. And that's what I really became drawn to is just and am incredibly grateful for is the way in which you encourage and challenge and ultimately point me back to Christ um, Mm. to be sanctified. So love you and thank you. Oh, I love you too. (laughs) I'm so, so happy that Allie's here. Today's podcast I want to share with you has a trigger warning. We will be speaking about suicide in this podcast and we want you to know beforehand. So if you need to step away and not listen to this, um, we totally understand. Um, The title of this podcast is How to Keep Your Faith in Jesus After Trauma. Mm -hmm. And uh, Allie and I realized after speaking a few of occasions that we had very similar stories Um, in our families. We had endured some very similar traumas surrounding suicide. Um, So we definitely had um, a connection that Mm -hmm. you almost don't want to say, you know, like, yes, this is our connection, but my goodness, thank God that there is a friend that knows what you're feeling. So um, Mm -hmm. we are going to talk about different stories or different ways that the Lord has gone on our behalf in our in our healing and we want to encourage you with with our brokenness because we know that by our testimony God's Mm -hmm. glory shines and what he has done in my life and how he has grown me after the traumas I've endured has been amazing and I just wanted to share with you how Allie has also been transformed by Jesus Mm -hmm. and she has kept her faith in Christ even though she's experienced very similar things like me in um the scope of suicide Um, but if you want to listen and need to have some encouragement in that area we would love for you to stay and hear what God has to say through us we have been in so Mm -hmm. much prayer about Mm -hmm. this episode and in fact we filmed it already one time yeah and it didn't work out the media (laughs) we had a practice (laughs) run we had a faux pas with the audio and it got deleted but both of us were like we're doing it again yes we're not giving up right right. both of us have lost our dads Um, I lost my dad in 2020 Mm -hmm. to bone cancer and that's another way that we kind of connected as well that we lost our dads Um, do you want to share yep I lost my dad in 2018 and to give a little bit of context as well I um, did not grow up in a believing family Um, we didn't go to church on Sundays Jesus wasn't talked about we didn't pray and so that was kind of my context growing up my dad was a cop he was a very like stoic man a few words very kind he was just what he didn't say in words he carried in his presence he was just always a solid rock and just a loving father um but he also and I think maybe some of you listeners too can can relate to this but um 
being a cop is something that isn't an easy job either. Mm -hmm. And so what he had to endure on a daily basis, um, going through the 80s and the 90s, like it just wasn't talked about. Mm -hmm. Um, And so he was a man of not really displaying his emotions at all, right? And so he didn't talk about feelings. I never saw him cry. I never saw him break down. And so that's just kind of how, how he was. But I was also a very observant child and knew that under the surface there were there were cracks in his foundation. Um, he was an anxious person. And I think, again, when you're in that field and you're in, you know, what you experience on uh, every shift that you go to and then you come home, it, it's hard to separate those things. Yeah, and I absolutely. think that he really struggled with anxiety. So when I was a junior in high school, I accepted Christ. Um, And that was a new thing and it became a new transition for our family. Um, From there, I I think, Lib, like you can relate to growing up in in a family that doesn't know Jesus maybe the way you think they know Jesus. um, The one thing you really want to give them in becoming a believer is for them to also become believers because there's a freedom and hope, right, that is found in in Jesus. And so I think very early on, I would have very um, wonderful but intense conversations with my dad because I saw that anxiety. I saw that playing out and I knew that he could have this wonderful, amazing gift. And so after having a very intense and loving and imperfect conversation on my half as well, um, he responded with Allison, you know, I'm, I'm 50 something years old and there, you can't change me, you know? And I remember the spirit at that point just saying, trust me with this. I've got this Mm -hmm. and you've done the work that you've needed to do. And I'm going to take it, you know, from here. Um, and so I just had that peace, right? Like that peace that surpasses Mm -hmm. all understanding and, I let it go. And and I think what the spirit really did in that moment is he transformed me from words into action. Mm. And I think from that point on, um, I got married, we had young boys, and I really began to see like a softening in my parents' heart because we would sing Jesus songs <laughs> to our yes. toddlers. And, and we to would babies, right? Yes. Like babies and kids change everything. Yes. And they just, I mean, especially him, just had this real sweet softness that came with our firstborn Colton when he was born. But I mean, we were very adamant that we were going to sing Jesus songs and we were going to do that whether, you know, my parents were there or not. And I think the really sweet transformation I began to see in his heart is that he would do those things. He would sing Jesus Loves Me with Colton. He would read books. They both were very intentional about that. And so I think that, um, that I think that really looking back on hindsight was a, was a point of transformation for both of them that I probably wasn't as aware of at the time. Right. But I think that the spirit works not only in our words, but also in our actions. I think we just, as we were talking about, as I was saying with you, like there's just a different light that gets shown. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think that is really powerful. And so fast forward to he retired and he began to really struggle because I think that anxiety wheel that was running because of the demands of his job could stopped and, but there was nothing to fuel it anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I think that I began to really watch him struggle and try to kind of help him navigate, hey, why don't you try taking guitar lessons? Why don't you try bike riding? And I think during that time, we also formed this really sweet friendship where I noticed he would come to me for advice Mm -hmm. or he would come to me for things, which was never for, um, that was never his way of doing things before. And so um, that was also really sweet, but he really began to decline and he declined quickly. August of 2018, and he had his, I don't know that it was his first panic attack, but it began a series of panic attacks for him, Mm -hmm. and I know it was terrifying and frightening, and we found out about it a week after they started happening because he didn't want us to be concerned or worried about it, and I just remember at that point, like, okay, Lord, like, this is, he's come to the end of his rope, Jesus I pray for his salvation. Like I I pray for him to, to come to you and to receive that hope and to receive the freedom that I talked about with him when we were, when I was 20 years old. You sowed a seed. 
Yes, yeah. You sow a seed with him. That's beautiful. And I love the way you're saying that you took it from words to action. Yeah. And I think sometimes, um, for me, I, I was in a Christian Mm-hmm. You know, in my life, I actually was an atheist and had to come to the Lord in a very different way. Like, I did not want to believe that there was a mm-hmm. loving God because of everything that I had gone through. Yeah. But when I saw my husband doing things like the, experiencing Jesus's mm-hmm. hands and feet through my husband, I began to believe in the power of Jesus because of my husband treating me in a different way yeah. I had never known. Yeah, so what you did that. for your dad was incredibly mm-hmm. impactful. That's really sweet. That's really, really sweet. Um, yeah, I think, and that all of that credit goes to the Spirit, right? Yeah, because absolutely. It's like the spirit Glory living. to God. <laughs> yes, totally. Um, and so August, he began to decline and struggled with panic attacks a lot. And so, um, you know, when you're when you're kind of walking down this path of, of experiencing somebody struggle with a mental condition, you can't, there's only so much you can do, mm-hmm. you know? And we kind of talked about that yeah. earlier too, right? Yeah. Like if, if you, it feels like you're powerless over yes. someone's life or, or safety yes. and it feels very anxious prone and yes. challenging. Yes. And I think too, the temptation would be to try to fix or to try to, do everything that you can because you love that person, right? right. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Spirit was very kind and gracious in showing me that the power that comes from prayer and the power of praying all of that stuff through. And so every conversation we would have, every time I would be on the phone with him and he would have a panic attack, I'd just be praying him, praying him through it. Yeah. And I think too, you know, when you when you pray for something, um, I can relate to the disciples when Jesus was going to go to the cross and. It really challenged the disciples' preconceived notion that Jesus was not going to be this national hero that conquers, right? Mm -hmm. And takes over Rome and, and just becomes this huge conqueror. What Jesus was going to do instead is submit himself to death. And Mm -hmm. I think I can relate to that in the sense of praying for my dad in this way and that I had these preconceived notions of mm-hmm. like, Lord, I know what he needs. Right. I know exactly how you need to do it right. and let's do it. And you have power. <laughs> and you have the power to do it. So here we go. Yes. You know. And unfortunately we lost him on November twelfth of two thousand eighteen to suicide. And I would never wish that on anybody. I mean it it there there are lots of traumatic, awful things that we navigate in this life and that has to be one of them you know because you feel very out of control you feel like I could have done something different or I could have done something more but ultimately it comes down to that individual right and it comes down to what their capacity is and what they can what they are able to handle and what they're not able to handle um and so yeah that was, that was a very, it was just, I mean, still five years later, there's not words that I can, that I can put to it, you no, know? there are no words. It, I mean, losing your dad, because I lost my dad in 2020 mm-hmm. of brain cancer, and I almost had grief backwards, because yeah. I knew he was going to die for a year, you know? So for yeah. me, I was waiting and waiting and waiting for him to die. Mm-hmm. He died, and it was one of the most painful seasons of my life. I, st- I still am in excruciating pain, but not mm-hmm. as hard as it was in the beginning. Mm-hmm. But losing just losing a parent is just, ah, oh, it is so painful in and it of itself. Yeah. So I cannot even imagine to lose someone to suicide and it's an abrupt and so such a mm-hmm. fast, I mean, it's a shock. I'm sure yeah. you were in shock. I'm sure there was, it's grief upon grief upon grief. And wow, mm-hmm. I am so sorry that that you had to go through that. It is, it, like you're saying, you don't wish that on anybody. And unless mm-hmm. you've been on the other side, there are no words to describe the, the feelings that you have when yeah. you lose someone to suicide. I am so sorry. Thank that, you, friend. That you lost your dad. Yeah, thank you. I am so grateful for how the Lord continues to minister to you Mm -hmm. because this is what we were talking about off camera is the fact that God, when we give him our pain, Mm -hmm. can give us hope 
mm-hmm. in the moment of affliction, right? Not before mm-hmm. when we're thinking of the thoughts that may happen, right? But in right. that moment, like the hovering of God's spirit is so, you can you can just mm-hmm. sense God's covering over mm-hmm. you. And I don't know if, I mean, would you be able to talk about what you experienced within the context of God and why was it that you didn't lose your faith in mm-hmm. Jesus mm-hmm. through that time? Can you explain a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think you described that really well when you said the shock piece. You know, I just remember feeling complete and total shock and not knowing how to put one foot in front of the other. And I think that when you don't have that kind of like preparation going into it, but what I will say is that we have hearts, right? And what I have read recently is that our heart is the core of our will. And so in any circumstance that we go through, whether it's a wonderful, awful, you know, and all of the above, we have a choice to make. Mm -hmm. And I think that what came up for me was in John 14, And it says, do not let your hearts be troubled. And this is Jesus speaking to the disciples. You believe in God, believe in me also. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that? I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And I think that if you think about the context of what Jesus was saying, he was hours from going to the cross, right? to experiencing separation from the Father for the first time, to pay for the sin of every man, woman, and child that has lived since Adam and Eve Mm -hmm. have sinned, right? And what was he concerned with? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Mm -hmm. And I just think that sometimes we don't think about the magnitude of the trauma that Jesus went through. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that comes as an encouragement and a challenge just to read like, John 10 to John 14, you will see anguish, you will see deep Mm -hmm. sorrow, Mm -hmm. you will see trauma Mm -hmm. that not only Jesus experienced, but also the disciples experienced because they didn't know fully what was coming. Um, And I think that that really anchored my choice. I knew, and I knew right after it happened, like I had a choice. I could either trust God through this, regardless of the circumstance of what I had prayed for, or I could trust myself and ultimately like go into self-protection mode. Mm-hmm. And I think um, that that choice for me became, no, I'm going to run to my refuge. I'm going to run to my God who has experienced more grief and trauma than I can even imagine. And yeah. he, he's going to know how to walk me through this on a daily basis. And I trust him fully with that. Right. Um, wow, that's so, so yeah. beautiful. Oh, thank you for sharing that. That yeah. is so beautiful. What I love that you said is you were in this moment of complete shock and you didn't even know how to put one foot in front of the other. And Mm -hmm. I really understand in in times of intense grief for me, Mm -hmm. I have been in seasons that I don't even want to get up. I've Mm -hmm. been so depressed, so anxious or so in such peak like I've dealt with PTSD so yeah. I know what your dad was going through and it is ha oh, it is it's yeah. so it's so so challenging um I heard someone say to me uh about PTSD it's post-traumatic mm-hmm. stress syndrome mm-hmm. and I've had it because I, I was raped when I was six mm-hmm. and at other times but I've been abused in very many ways I have had complex trauma mm-hmm. so my PTSD was crazy in my mid 30s to mid no mid 20s to mid 30s and I had to go to therapy and what the Lord revealed to me about it was that I had to accept the feelings Mm -hmm. right and when you have this wave of intense emotion you almost want to no I don't want to feel it Mm -hmm. but when I realized that I had to feel it in order to disengage from it yeah. Then they became less and less. And I. Mm-hmm. this is one of the reasons why my mission has been to be a voice for the voiceless. Mm-hmm. Be a voice for the people that can't and don't want to. Like mm-hmm. your dad, I feel so sad for your dad. I feel so sad for my dad. My mom, mm-hmm. my mother also tried to commit suicide. She's, she's tried a few times and mm-hmm. she is alive still. But when she was in her very worst case, moments Mm -hmm. I felt like there is no space for talking about mental health in a way that serves people this 
freedom of being okay not being okay yeah and this is one of the reasons why i feel so passionate about speaking out about mm-hmm. things that matter like mm-hmm. this because there is someone right now thinking mm-hmm. i don't matter i won't mm-hmm. i don't want to live anymore mm-hmm. or someone that has been in the brunt of losing someone to suicide mm-hmm. and feeling like they're on their own and they're never going to be okay right 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 and i love that you said that the lord he gave you a choice he gave you a heart to say yeah. i have two choices and these are hard mm-hmm. this is a hard place to be already like there is no ease in in the trauma right there right. is you were put in this really tough position but your heart and its posture of humility bent mm-hmm. low to the ground and said i need my savior right now yeah and what you discovered in that moment was that you had an Emmanuel, mm-hmm. right? A God with you that was Absolutely. walking these things out with you mm-hmm. and not just saying, oh, Allie, just go ahead and you can just deal with this on your own. No, he said, I am, not only am I mm-hmm. going to comfort you at this time, but I'm going to heal you in my time. Right. 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 I don't know if you want to talk about maybe what what were some things that you went through at that time that were mm-hmm. healing like mm-hmm. how did you put one foot in front of the other what were some practical ways that you did do that mm-hmm. so i think i'm going to go back to this scripture verse two because i think this speaks to a lot of this but it's romans eight twenty eight, and it says and we know that god causes everything to work together for the good of those who love god mm-hmm. and are called according to his purpose for them That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. Mm, And so I think practically putting one foot in the, if I'm being very honest, I don't really remember a lot from the point at which he passed from November until March. But I think something that you said that was very good is that I let myself feel what I needed to feel, Mm -hmm. whether it was numbness, Mm -hmm. whether it was deep, like sorrowful pain, whether it was remembering like wonderful memories, mm-hmm. I felt it. Yeah. And I think then I pr- the, my daily practice was I surrendered it to the Lord, mm. right? Like, you know every detail mm. of my life yeah. and every detail of what this person meant to me. Yeah. And so I give this to you yeah. in prayer. And I think just that, I- that idea of I f- of feeling what I needed to feel, but then also giving it to some, to somebody who is faithful and gracious and kind and yeah, the ultimate comforter. I think that he just strand by strand began to heal my heart mm-hmm. in that way. And, um, it's and I so think beautiful. too, in making that choice and really trusting God with it, you know, I think that we as disciple makers, not only do we have a choice, but in our choice, it creates a ripple effect, right? Yes, absolutely. And so what was a really beautiful thing in making that choice, right, is that it had influence over my mom and how my mom made her daily choices, Yeah. right? Yes. And how I got to watch the boys make our boys as we tried to navigate through how we were going to explain that to them. But the most beautiful thing that happened after my dad passed is, so he passed in November, in February, it was an officer-related death. Um, and so there was an officer there who had been on the job for three months and had been trained under one of the officers that my dad knew really, really well. Um, and so we had an opportunity because God is so gracious and he laid, I mean, from finances to the chaplain that came who had known my dad at the department, like, mm-hmm. All of those things were just sweet details that he laid out before us in all of those ways. And so we had an opportunity that February to meet with the officer who was involved in my dad's death. And um, the most beautiful thing that came out of that is watching all of us hug him and say, this wasn't your fault. Yeah. Um, you were put in a really difficult situation. And yes. our hope in this is that you seek the counseling that you need to seek, you know, but that there is, you are considered family to us. Um, and I think that, you guys, that doesn't happen um, only by the grace of God does that stuff happen. Yeah. And I think that in that moment of us being really raw and really vulnerable, the Lord. I don't know how the Lord is going to use that in his life, but I think that's that's 
a really good picture of how we are to carry that stuff out. Absolutely. It is to bless others yeah. in the midst of wow. hard stuff, you know? And so, um, yeah, that has you been You ministered to him. Like you were talking about how Jesus um, was going to be crucified mm-hmm. and what he was concerned about was us, yeah. right? And yeah. you, at that moment of your grief, you allowed the Spirit of God to do that. Mm-hmm. for that gentleman. He mm-hmm. he was probably riddled with so much feelings of guilt and shame. Mm-hmm. Your gentleness and your forgiveness, mm-hmm. that's beautiful. And that is such a beautiful picture of yeah. Christ. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, he just, you know. That is so beautiful. He shared, like, that he went home and he just didn't know what to do. So him and his wife, who had been, were newlyweds, um, He cried the entire night and hadn't been able to sleep well since that happened. And so we just, it was just a really sweet opportunity uh, for us to share love with him in a way that, from a place of really deep pain, you know? And I think that that is just so contrary to our flesh and contrary to our natural ability, right? As we talked about earlier, is to protect is... And in that protection, we isolate or we remove ourselves from people because we don't want to experience those hard, painful things again. But I think we really have a beautiful opportunity to speak love into other people's life by allowing ourselves to feel something that is deeply sorrowful and painful and surrender it at the feet of Jesus and let him take that to his perfect plan and purpose here on earth, you know? Thank you for sharing that. I have no idea how much that is going to bless my heart and mm-hmm. the hearts of people who have listened to that. God calls us to be different, right? Mm-hmm. When when we desire to be in God's kingdom and we say we are a Christian, we're saying, "God, you are my you are my savior. You you reign." Yeah. Not me. Right. That is the decision that Christians make, right? Mm-hmm. Do I believe that Jesus is Lord and Savior? And if I do, I am going to believe that for myself. Yeah. And when you do, you are inviting the King of Glory into mm-hmm. your heart that mm-hmm. seals your position mm-hmm. towards heaven and opens up the door to go to heaven right. and have community with a holy God that would have never been open and available to you. Mm-hmm. And when you're saying yes to that, you're also saying yes to a lot of hardship because right. you are saying, I am not going to be of this world, right? Right, But I'm going to let God, right? It, and I think that one of the most beautiful things on earth is experiencing the sanctification of Jesus yeah. in our hearts. And, and it is not easy. It mm-hmm. is not easy. It is so mm-hmm. hard to allow certain things that, it, it, right, it doesn't feel fair. It doesn't seem like... Mm-hmm. It, you you almost want to be like no well if he's a loving God then he should have done this or this or that right but right. I, what I keep hearing you say Allie and one of the I'm so grateful for for what you're bringing onto this podcast that mm-hmm. the word surrender co- keeps coming out of your mm-hmm. mouth and we aren't initially like we don't like to surrender I know for me like that's like (laughs) oh totally that is the total opposite (laughs) of what I want to do in my heart Mm -hmm. that what you did for that gentleman was was the total opposite of what your flesh probably wanted to do Mm -hmm. but it is there that grace is met and you became an experience of Jesus Mm -hmm. to that officer that's really sweet (laughs) <laughs> that is amazing. And but what, it's just like right, the, and the, yeah. what the verse that you read, that God works all things. All things. Every detail all of our things. lives. And to, uh, to be quite honest, my, my mm-hmm. story, you know, with my mother, my mom tried to commit suicide. Mm-hmm. And for the longest time, I never wanted to talk about it because I was so mm-hmm. ashamed. I was ashamed not about her. I was ashamed that that was my past. I was right. ashamed that that was the story of, of, of our family. Right. And I went to mm-hmm. I went to a life coach. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I told her, I said, you know, I have such messed up past. My, my mom is struggling so much mm-hmm. mentally right now and, 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 and in the past she has. And I just feel like it's just never going to be a victorious story. It's always going to be this victim thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And she looked at me and she said, no, the story doesn't have to end that way. Mm-hmm. And she wasn't a Christian, but what she gave me was the freedom to think of a different 
way. She gave me a different perspective for my pain and for the trauma in my past. And that, I mean, that is even, that's more biblical than, than just the right. life. Which God gives us, he gives us vision for the, the future. And he gives us hope that no matter what we're, we're going through currently or we have gone through, he's going to take that and make it good. Mm -hmm. There is a beautiful scripture in Isaiah 53 verses 3 through 6. It says, he was despised and rejected by mankind. He meaning Jesus. I'm going to read that one more time just so you're tracking. He it means Jesus, okay? Isaiah 53, 3, 4. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised. And we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. And yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. My favorite part of this is this end. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. Mm -hmm. Good. That is one of the best scriptures I have ever read. I mean, it pierces through to my heart so much because I have gone through so much pain. Mm -hmm. And I know, Ellie, that you have as well. And what what I think that we often think is no one gets it. Yeah. Right? Like, woe is me. I'm a victim. Mm -hmm. No one understands. But when we read our scripture, we understand that we have this God who is living right. and available available to our feelings right he's right. not saying oh deal with it it's right fine. no he's saying i care i deeply care about you and i have bore your pain i have been through this you can understand that i understand what it feels like i understand mm -hmm. and i have placed my hands under your pain so that you know right. that you have someone supporting you and right. that's what i love about jesus that's what he has given me in my pain he has mm -hmm. given me a, a sense of belonging mm -hmm. a sense of feeling unashamed mm -hmm. of it all mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. feeling tied or 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 a prisoner to fear mm -hmm. any longer mm -hmm. because going through traumas like this really can can hurt your mind in a way that ooh. Right. It's very distracting, right? Mm -hmm. To go through this trauma and then to think, who else in my family is going to do this? Or if someone, mm -hmm. you know, for me, my mom tried to commit suicide, but she, she was, she was alive. Right. So for me, it was always, when is she going to try again? When right. is she going to try again? Right. Well, I remember one time asking the Lord, like, I can't deal with this anymore. I cannot be mm -hmm. in this toxic environment. I, 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 I feel like I'm up and I'm down. If she's okay, I'm okay. If she's not okay, I'm not okay. Yeah. And I just... I just prayed that God would deliver me. And what I heard mm -hmm. God say to me in my spirit, I don't hear God audibly, okay? It was it was yeah. in my spirit. It was like a lesson that I just felt imparted onto my soul. It was it was that if she lived or died, that wasn't the contingency upon my freedom. Mm -hmm. I could have freedom from anxiety mm -hmm. if I wanted it today. Yeah. No matter her wanting or not wanting to live. Right. I could have freedom of the, the turmoil of being worried about her mm -hmm. and being sick worried. Like, I mean, this was mm -hmm. a lot of ups and downs with my mom. So I had so much anxiety that I, I could not even function correctly. Mm -hmm. And the Lord set me free. He set mm -hmm. me free. He set me free with that thought of I am not responsible for a life. Right. I can't be God's Holy Spirit. Right. And like you right. said, the most important aspect of this is prayer. Yes. We can pray for our mm -hmm. loved ones and we don't have to be tied to a feeling of fear or condemnation or shame mm -hmm. upon our trauma. We can look to the Bible and ask God, like, what do you see about right. this situation? And do you care about this? Yes, of course. Yeah. Right. Like when you go to the Bible, you understand that you have a caring, loving God, even if what has happened to you mm -hmm. isn't loving right? right that doesn't mean that your god isn't loving right. that doesn't mean that your god isn't faithful um i just love that no matter what has discouraged us we have something so important we have the word of god yes that heals us mm -hmm. is there a verse that was so impactful to you at the time of your father yeah yeah i mean psalm 91 was a big one and it actually became a tattoo that i put for the first time at age 34. Yeah. <laughs> on my arm. But um, it, it has always been, Psalm 91 has always been a life verse for me that just 
very early on in my walk, I connected so much to when the Lord just really spoke through that. But it's verse 4 that said, God is always covering you. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and your protection. Mm. Um, And he very much did that shortly after my dad had passed. Um, We had dear family and friends come together and pray scripture all throughout the home on the first night that we slept back at my parents' house. And um, I just had a dream and the Lord revealed like the last moments, not from the heavenly or not from an earthly perspective, but from the heavenly perspective, the last moments of my dad here um, on earth and, and where he ultimately resides now. And he didn't have to do that. You know, that's not something that I think that the Lord needed to do, but I, he met me exactly where I was at and I think it was I was in the refuge of his wing I had chosen for him to be my protection and he graciously met me in that place and knew what my heart would be wrestling with and just um graciously loved me and tenderly loved me in that moment and I think really too just to challenge and encourage everybody I think what I loved what you said is that, you know, there's that temptation for our circumstances to question what God's character really is, that the circumstance can tempt us to change that God is good, Mm -hmm. that he is faithful, that he is loving, that he is kind. Um, And I think my challenge and encouragement would be that don't let the trial or the circumstance become the false teacher. Mm -hmm. Um, Know that no matter what we go through, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, that God is there and the nature of who God is is in his word Mm -hmm. and that he relates to us. I mean, the God of the universe at the beginning of time lowered himself, was born in a manger, you know, to take on the humanity of everything that we experience. We have a relatable God. We have a God who loves us in every detail. And so it's all it's all within his word. And so that would be my challenge and encouragement for everybody is we have a choice when we're faced with really, really difficult things. And the conviction and the choice is to choose God every time, yeah. to rely on him through everything, and to bring our feelings to him, mm-hmm. to bring our lack of words, just to continue as, you know, we ha- we have said throughout this, to surrender. One time, I, I I didn't even know what to pray. I was like, yeah, Jesus, can you just pray for me? Like, I literally yes, have it. no way of yeah. praying for myself right now. Yeah. You pray for me. What I love that you're saying is that no matter what we're going through, we have this conviction of trusting God's character because he says so and the Bible says that God is pleased with those that have faith Mm -hmm. faith is the the assurance of things not seen right we can't see God but when we have faith in him everything changes I know for me it has I have changed like I've transformed I have not transformed myself. No, (laughs) the Lord has transformed me, but I have changed so much because of the faith that I have put in Christ. And it hasn't been my own doing. It's only been God's glory, right? God's doing in my heart. And one of the things that I, one of the things that I don't want to forget to say is that when we are in those moments of intense grief, Mm -hmm. journaling and, and going to therapy mm-hmm. uh, or if you can't afford therapy asking a friend that really knows how to hold space like yeah. talking about it is so important yeah. but if you can't talk about it writing it down and talking about it with yourself yeah. for me it's been incredibly healing mm-hmm. to write that's why I started my blog mm-hmm. I started my blog because I needed to write things out mm-hmm. and here I thought I was just going to start a blog for myself and the Lord has expanded the impact mm-hmm. in which my writings have been viewed and seen and I I am in awe of what God has done through my writing but the writing that I committed myself to do was for myself yeah. so that I could heal because I noticed a huge difference that's from powerful. not doing it right like because 
we need to know that we matter. Our feelings yes, matter. Absolutely. Right? We want that best friend that's going to get us all. There's there's no person that is going to be 100% there for us except right. for Jesus and ourselves. Like We have to create that space right. for our pain. And mm-hmm. not everybody can handle or, or, or understand. Mm-hmm. Or many people really, I mean, if you talk about something in the heart, they might not know how to hold space for a hard conversation or right. a very deep, deep feelings. But... On a page, you can trust that your feelings will be with God and he cares so deeply about them. So much. Right? Like I would write things down like, God, today is a really awful day and I don't even want to get up. Yep. And I have, you know, I, I've dealt with anxiety and PTSD mm-hmm. and, suic- and suicidal ideation, even mm-hmm. though I, because of how my mom t- tried to commit suicide, I would never do that because the other side of that, it is, it, 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 it is a pain and a suffering like you have n- never known. It is yeah. awful. So I would never do that, but I have struggled with that. Yeah. And I have said, Lord, these are my feelings. Yeah. This is what I'm experiencing right now. This is the, the, the reality of my heart. It hurts so badly, but you, Lord, you're going to care for it, God, and mm-hmm. help me to know what the truth is about these situations. Yeah. And when I've prayed those prayers and put that on paper and done like a care cycle for my heart, mm-hmm. God has blown my mind that he has brought scripture to me. Mm-hmm. He has brought the truth because yeah. I've been asking, like, what is the truth about this? Right. Mm-hmm. Like when we're so discouraged about our traumas, mm-hmm. that the discouragement about that is what sets us into this feeling of not wanting to have faith. Right. And not wanting to trust that God is good. But when we actively seek him, because God God wants to be sought, right? Yeah. He says, seek me with all your heart. Mm-hmm. Knock and the door will be opened. Mm-hmm. So seek the Lord with your pain and know that you are not a waste of time for him. Right. Right. You are not a burden Absolutely. to him. He wants to know deeply what you're experiencing and what you have experienced. Mm-hmm. There is time for all of it and there's time for healing mm-hmm. that goes beyond all that we can possibly imagine. I know for me, the healing that I've done in the midst of the traumatic events has been a catapult to opening up other things that would have never healed had I not gone through that horrible thing. I don't know if you can relate to that. And what I loved what you said too, is that in something that's very normal, and I think they're normal in response to trauma, right? But specifically for suicide, too, that suicide ideation that happens after, it's a very normal response because you have somebody who you've grown up admiring and loving. And so when they're making this act, it's almost like that he- they're, they're that hero to you. Mm-hmm. So if they're doing that, then there's, there's, there's very much like a, a physiological response in your body that says, well, then maybe somehow like... I mirror that, you know, and I think that also being in community, what you said about writing that down, taking that to the Lord, having daily practices, no matter, again, what trauma you've walked through, that you're surrendering it to him and also asking the spirit to discern, like, I need to talk about this. So where do I go? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think a huge thing for us was counseling and we did biblical counseling. And so that's a little bit different in the sense of you share kind of the feelings and stuff that are going on and then through your counselor you're pointed back to the word of okay Mm -hmm. what does the Mm -hmm. Lord say about this Mm -hmm. and you just walk through very practical questions and so that is also a really wonderful resource and tool is making sure that you are talking about it because you're exactly right and especially with suicide there's still a stick even though we've become a little bit more aware and um soft to the idea of mental struggles and mental illness, there's still a stigma attached to it, you know, and something that I had to navigate was this thing happened to me and I have no control over how that gets perceived by others. And I think that there is, there is an action step that we can take and that's openly choosing to talk about it, choosing to discern and look for either our pastors or Um, finding, asking the spirit too to show us who are, like what you said, like who are friends that will point me back to God's word. I think all of making sure that you stay in community and continue to stay open and vulnerable is, is really the biggest thing and what's helped me. So, yeah. 
Yeah, it's we're going through one of the biggest epidemics of mm-hmm. loneliness in this time. And I know for me, I have felt lonely in my entire life. Like yeah. I'm a loner by nature because I was hurt so badly that my trust mm-hmm. issues had issues. Yeah. <laughs> and issues and issues and issues. <laughs> so I had never wanted to be around people and didn't mm-hmm. want to share myself yeah. with anyone. Yeah. Uh, when the Lord met me and 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 it was interesting what you said about my mother um yeah there was this thing of like putting her on a pedestal and idolizing her and when that happened it was almost like my hero fell Mm -hmm. right very hard yeah (laughs) and I was so angry and I was grappling with grief uh, that was so intense there was so much that I had to uncover and learn about my mom is just a person yeah. And I, I had to ask God to help me see her the way he saw her. Oh, yeah. Right? And my That's prayer beautiful. was like, please give me eyes for her the way you see her, not the way mm-hmm. I see her. Mm-hmm. And he began to uncover that I had this like enmeshed and toxic relationship with her that had no business being there anymore because mm-hmm. I was a Christian, which meant I was in al- allegiance with him. Yeah. I was in just, it was this vertical relationship Mm -hmm. that had nothing to do with my horizontal relationships. Mm -hmm. And if I had to, if I had still had a horizontal relationship, like the Lord was going to cut it (laughs) and it was going to be very painful, Love, yes, but out of love so that I could be whole in him first, first love that. And when that happened, all of my relationships have transformed and changed. I have never felt more free. I have yeah. never felt more joy to be in relationship mm-hmm. or even mm-hmm. safety, right? Before, Crazy. my boundaries were nowhere. I learned boundaries. I learned how to have boundaries. Mm-hmm. I learned how to take care of myself. Mm-hmm. That's why my blog is, I'm so passionate about teaching women and men to live lives that are worth living, right? Yeah. And that happens by choosing and going back to the very beginning of the podcast when you said we have a heart that has mm-hmm. gets the, to choose, right? Yeah. We get to choose choose our, re- our reaction to everything that happens to us and we could either be a victim and I know that being a victim to something harsh it mm-hmm. you're still that that's okay to be a victim but it's not okay to stay in victim mentality because God has mm-hmm. bigger for you he calls you a conqueror and he wants you to be victorious over your situation and he calls you to a life of freedom from all the things that you have gone through so we don't have to stay ashamed we don't have yeah. to stay lonely we can talk about it we, my favorite thing that I have learned in this podcast with you is mm-hmm. surrender mm-hmm. our care to him mm-hmm. and I am so grateful that you came on here because you have opened my eyes in a way that I needed to be open today and mm-hmm. it's brought a lot of healing to my own story so mm-hmm. thank you Allie for thank you for having me all of the wisdom that you've shared and that I'm sure is not easy to talk about but mm-hmm. thank you so much for your courage yes. you're courageous thank you I'm happy to be here loved being able to share this i have a tradition of praying for my tribe at mm-hmm. the end of every podcast would you mind praying for our friends um, not yeah, i would love that uh lord i just i thank you so much for this time i thank you so much for this opportunity to share lord i just pray um over all of the listeners out there lord i pray for each and everyone's heart lord i don't know the trauma i don't know the struggles and i don't know the trauma that may not be there right But Lord, I just, I pray over each and every listener's heart, Father, that they would be filled with your spirit, God, that they um, would know you a little bit more through listening through this podcast. Father, I pray that they know that they are um, strong and courageous in you. God, and I pray for those who don't know you and have may have just fallen upon this podcast as well. Lord, I pray that... um, that you've used what we have shared as an opportunity to draw them closer to you. God, I thank you so much for this time. I thank you so much for for Lib's heart and her passion that goes out um, to want to preach your good news of love and and transformation and sanctification. Lord, um, may we continue to honor you in everything that we do imperfectly, right? Um, Lord, we thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you for the cross, Jesus, that you so humbly walk to, to give us this gift of being in intimate relationship and fellowship with you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. Yay. All right, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Share it with a friend who might need some encouragement today and leave us a comment down below. Let us know what the Lord spoke over your heart. We would be Mm -hmm. so, so honored to hear from you and how this podcast has impacted your life today. Mm -hmm. We'll see you in the next week. Bye. Bye.